Bitcoin showed immense strength and ultimately defended the $44,000 level with a bounce exactly at the 21 day moving average. Is Bitcoin now greenlit for further gainage? After ADA reached new all time highs, as Bitcoin absolutely blasted the highs not seen in over three months. Are the bulls now ready to bend over the bears and show them what two, potentially three pumps on a good day feels like? And as yesterday, Brandon Strongarms announced huge news for their profit allocation back into cryptocurrency, specifically ETH, proof of stake assets, and DeFi. Bitcoin seems to have turned the tables, but most importantly, after two failures at the 200 DMA, will it be able to withstand a third attempt? I'm your host, Gregory Giggles, and after an entire week of downside pressure, Bitcoin was ultimately able to defend the 21 day moving average and set a new local high. But with most models and analysts predicting the crypto market has a few months left of massive gains until the end of this year before the end of this potential bull cycle, will we see a similar swing in the Bitcoin dominance like we saw in the final? four months of the last one. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, turn in this guy so you see absolute time sensitive alerts. And without any further magoo, let's dump on it. Wow, so with Coinbase and its leader, Brandon Livestrong, absolutely making insane moves for the space with this even more recent announcement of $500 million worth of crypto they'll be adding to their balance sheet and allocating 10% of quarterly profits into crypto assets. Uh, this is huge, okay? Uh, perfect. I mean, it's obvious we want to see this coming from a crypto, uh, crypto exchange, a crypto company. You want to see them investing more and more into cryptos, right? Not just keeping their moolah in USD. But this is big as well. They plan to invest specifically in Ethereum, proof of stake assets, and DeFi tokens, and other crypto assets supported for trading on Coinbase's platform. And specifically as well, over time, we can operate more of our business in crypto. That is the goal after all, uh, because ultimately that would benefit Coinbase as they're a crypto company. And shortly after that, Bitcoin was able to surpass not only 47, but 48,000 and very, very briefly at this moment, 49,000 by about $100 earlier today as well. Coinbase shares also rose 3%. So the reason I'm talking about this is, I mean, obviously this is good. I mean, Coinbase is absolutely doing really good things in terms of making the public feel safe entering into crypto, making institutions feel safer playing around with crypto. And overall, even though their app does go down at critical pumps and critical dumps, I think they're having a very clearly a net positive on the crypto industry and crypto adoption. So with that being said, Bitcoin did actually briefly surpass 49,000 US dollars. As many people pointed out, this falling wedge yesterday, which did absolutely break out to the completion there. And the question is now, are we out of the woods? As as soon as we approach the 21 day, that is where the ultimate mega bounce came. We saw about five days of continued dumpiness. We were setting lower lows and lower highs where ultimately we come into contact. And again, that's why some people say, well, why do these moving averages matter? Again, the 21 day is one of the most critical uh, moving averages in general. And that is exactly, literally exactly where Bitcoin did bounce. And uh, as well at the moment or at the time, it basically also lined up with a 21 week moving average, which as you can see, uh, that's where Bitcoin bounced, right? Again, right at about uh, 44,000, a little bit under 44,000. So here we are. And something we've been talking about for absolute months now is this MACD cross. Now, again, this is a more long term thing. So it, it doesn't necessarily at all mean by tomorrow that we're going to be pumping another $10,000. But uh, this is a very, very, very bullish long term indicator. And ultimately, what I think is going to be happening is we're going to print something very similar to this uh, as we end out of this bull cycle if in fact it does end out if the people that think uh, bitcoin's entering lengthening cycles uh, actually gets proven wrong and if the people that believe we're entering a super cycle are proven wrong because again you have the theories of super cycle you have lengthening cycles you have a million cycles you still have people calling for ten thousand dollar and below bitcoin which i believe should be called the baby brain cycle however uh, i think the most uh, common consensus amongst most people in regards to what type of cycle we're in is the same cycle we've been in, a four year cycle, right? Uh, just following like the stock to flow model, as opposed to these new uh, variations on a cycle again, like a super cycle or like lengthening cycles with diminishing returns. Point is, uh, I personally think we are gonna see this uptick over the next couple of months. So long term, and that's why I've always said I'm extremely bullish 
on Bitcoin. Ultimately, I wanted to pull back to continue down to that $42,000 level, but the 21 day moving average did actually, I mean, to be fair, it did complete its first big test after flipping back above it. Uh, back at the end of July, so only a month ago. Uh, but when we see Bitcoin come into contact with it, we get a very strong bounce. And guys, when that happens, uh, basically that adds a very strong case to a bullish argument for Bitcoin. So really, objectively, that's a that's a strong bullish indicator for Bitcoin's momentum over the next few weeks. And again, personally, like I think, uh, ending out 2021, as I've always said, I still think six figures per Bitcoin is absolutely absolutely in the cards and uh yeah i've never really had any doubts about that you know that the tables have turned and bitcoin has had a little bit of an upswing it's absolutely critical that from here on out forty six thousand, it does remain we remain above forty six thousand. uh forty seven thousand. when we breached that this was the very tippy top of our last uh five uh, last multi-month five uh resistance and support zones there so yeah breaking 47 did initiate about a two thousand dollar move Currently, we're seeing a little bit of a pullback after uh, heading up all the way to about 49.1. To continue, I actually just wanted to share my experience with trading over the last week uh, because I've been doing it aggressively. And for about four straight days, I was doing very well. And ultimately, I had a little bit of an oopsie. But to be honest, it is 100% my fault. Uh, my biggest flaw with trading is that I get too greedy, right? I enter positions, I set my stop losses. And, you know, many times if the positions actually start going my way and I start seeing the gains, uh, I get greedy and uh, I could easily take profits that I should be more than happy with. Again, keep in mind, I'm trading with an amount of my portfolio that if I lost the entire thing, it wouldn't change my life anyway. So I think that's, first of all, I should be clarifying that. I never trade with something uh, to begin with that if I lose, it would affect my life. So obviously I think that's rule number one is never trade with, you know, I mean, don't invest more than you can afford to lose, let alone trade more than you can afford to lose. But yeah, my, my worst enemy is absolutely myself. Uh, Every time I would get in a position where I was in really good gains, everything was looking great. Pretty much the TA played out for about four days in a row. Uh, I just got greedy and I thought, you know what? I want more. I want more. And ultimately, I think it's pretty easy to see how that can end up backfiring. So yeah, uh, I mean, for me, even just knowing basic TA, always utilizing stop losses uh, can really just save a lot of trouble. And fighting the nature of becoming too greedy, I think is something uh, I don't think I'm the only one that struggles with getting too greedy with trades, I would assume. But with that being said, Bitcoin has avoided a bearish uh, downside scenario. Obviously we talked about Bitcoin does really need to hold like 46K at this moment, because again, there can always be a swing. That's something that surprises me is that the more experienced somebody is, the more they will tell you this is a possibility and not a guarantee. There is not a single investor or trader that has been in the space uh, and been successful that will tell you there is such thing as a 100% guaranteed trade. There is never, a ever a 100% guaranteed anything. Trading and technical analysis specifically are probabilities, right? Even if a pattern has a 95% chance to break a certain way, which is very rare anyway, like 70 to 75% is a really, really good ratio for a pattern breaking a certain way. Even if a pattern was 95% likely to break a certain way, what does that 5% mean? It means it could still not break that way that the 95% would tell you that it would. See you guys new channel, make sure to like, subscribe, share, and this gives me some absolutely time-sensitive alerts. And without any further ado, uh, that's it for me. Bye-bye.